Today is indeed a good day. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 verses 1 to 3 reads, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth will give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though it waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. This is our hope. This is our joy. This is our peace. I just want us to honor God in this place this morning. I just want us to honor him and say he is worthy of all the honor and all the glory. He's worthy of all the praise. He's Elohim Adonai. He is king of all kings. He's our refuge and he's our strength. I just want us to praise God in this place this morning. I just want to tell you to tell God how much you love him. Begin to bless his name. Begin to give honor unto his name. Oh, if it is him that has placed breath in our lungs this morning, it is him that has given us, oh God, 
Father. Oh God, I made it made us available and made us able to be here at this present moment it is him oh god that has made the way where there seems to be no way he's our strength and he's our refuge he's our strength and he's our refuge ah uh, we would have learned uh, oh that he is the bread of life uh, oh god and he's the very wine that we drink uh, oh can we begin to bless his name can we begin to praise his name this morning can we give honor where honor is due can we give praise where where praise is due. Oh, can we lift up his name above any other name, above any other God, above any other idol, above our issues, above our problems. Oh, for he is indeed King. Oh, for he is indeed Lord. For he is indeed our Savior. For he is indeed our friend. For he is indeed our Father. He is indeed ours to hold on to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an old hymn, our old chorus that we used to sing when we were growing up in church. And it says, we have an anchor that keeps our soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock, oh, fasten to the rock that cannot move. Oh, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. And we used to shit church with this song. We would have released a song of praise and joy. If I tell you the things that are happening in Iran and in Israel, despite it all, we have a hope. We have something to hold on. Oh, for he is the solid rock upon which we stand. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Can we begin to bless him this morning? For this is our hope. This is our sure. It says we oh, have an anchor. Ah, uh, that keeps us sure. Oh, in the midst of all that may be going on, though we may still fear at time. This is our rock. This is our rock. Hallelujah. I want us to sing this song this morning. Uh, and I want you to believe it. I want that when you sing it, to begin to believe it, that joy will begin to fill your souls. That despite all that is going on in the world, that despite all that is happening, we know, we know, we know this is what we can stand upon. This is what we can stand short of. Ah, this is what we can believe in. It is his word that he exalts above himself. And if his word said that he's our strength and he's our refuge, then there's something that we can hold on to. Ah, uh, can we sing this song this morning? Hallelujah. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fast and fast to the rock that cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. We have, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Fast and sure, out the pillows roll. Fast and fast and to the rock that cannot move. Round it for my feet in the same oh, we have, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Stand fast and sure, out the pillows roll. And fast and to the rock that cannot move. Round it for my in the oh, we have, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure. Oh, fast into the, fast into the rock that cannot move. Down the permanent in the sea. We have an anchor, we have an anchor. To the rock that cannot move, round it firmly in the sacred. Oh, we have, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure. We are fastened to the rock that cannot move, round it firmly in the Savior's love. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 
Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 and it reads for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear for I will help you I say it again Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 and it reads for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear I will help you hallelujah I want this this, this morning to begin to just I want us to pray this morning and I want us to understand that there's a joy and there's a peace in knowing our Lord and Savior it is these things that he has promised us. It is these things that he's given unto us. I want us to pray. I want us to pray and begin to praise his name and bless his name. Because he says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It's upon this we build our altar. It's upon this we build our hope. It's upon this, oh God, we are sure and we can be strong in. I want us to begin to pray and say, Lord, oh Lord, you are all I have. You are my help. You are my strength. Oh God, you are my shield. You are my refuge. Oh God, and in the midst, oh all in the midst, in the middle of it all. Oh God, despite it all, my God and my Father, this is our joy. This is our hope this morning. This is our peace. This is what we can be sure of. I want us to begin to say, Lord, Lord, I thank you, oh God. Oh God, for you just being God. Oh God, because there's nobody else that could be God. Oh God, the way you love me and the way you do things, my God and my Father. Oh God, it is something, oh God, that I ought to rejoice in. It is something I ought to praise your name in. It's something I ought to, oh God, to lift up the name of Jesus for. It is something I ought to say, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor, my God and my Father. It is something, oh God, that we can stand upon. For upon this we shall build our church. Are we the church, my God? Oh, so I will build myself upon your word upon your promises upon that which you would have spoken to us oh my god and my father oh you are my god and you are my father oh jesus and i said thank you oh god oh i ought to praise your name i ought to give you glory i ought to give you praise oh where would i be without you oh god where would i go without you oh god how would i survive without you oh my god God and my father. Oh God, you are worthy of all. Oh, the honor and all the praise. Oh God, oh God, without you, oh God, where will we be? Where if you be? Oh God, oh God, you keep on to it. It is you. It is you who. It is you, Jesus. 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 My God. My God. My God. It is you. It's you. It's you. It's you. And it's only you. It will always be you. It will always be you. Oh, God. Oh, God. It is this we can stand upon. Oh, we praise your name this morning. We bless your name. Ah, oh, will we bless him this morning? Will we praise his name? Will we give him honor? Oh, so we have an anchor. We have an anchor. Oh, that keeps us. Oh, steadfast. And show up the bellows. What the bellows are all oh, fastened. Oh, we're fastened to the rock. Thank you.
our Savior to love us. Oh, we have a name. It is upon this uh, all that we shall build our church. Uh, it's upon this we shall build our house. Uh, we fast into the rock. They can, they cannot move. verse 4 and we know this one so so well it says even though I walk through the valley I will fear no evil for thou art with me your rod and thy staff they comfort me ah this is our peace oh when we pass through the darkest valleys and we know 
This is what we can hold on to. Uh, it is his scripture. It is his word. Oh, I want us to open up our mouth and begin to bless his name. Begin to worship him. Oh, begin to say, Lord, it's you and only you. Oh, that has been bringing me through. That has been carrying me through. Oh, it is you. It is you, oh my God and my Father. Oh, God, that has been carrying me through. As I read in scripture, oh God, it's not because I am somebody. It's not because I'm better than another. Oh, but it's your strength. Oh God, it's your grace. Oh God, Jesus, it's your will for my life. It's your will for our lives. Oh God, that when we walk through the valley of the shadows, oh, that we ought not to fear. Oh, it's your will. It's your will for our lives. Oh God, that as we walk through the valleys, oh, that as we pass on through, that as we walk on, as we walk through the troubles of life, oh, that thy rod and thy staff, oh, they stand, oh, my God, my God, my God, 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 oh my God, my God, my God, oh you're my God, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, ah my God, my God, ah my God, oh in the valley. Oh God on the mountain top. Oh Jesus. Oh my God, my God. Oh my God. You're my staff. You're my rock. Oh, you're my rock. You're my friend. Oh, you're one. Oh God, that will carry me. Oh, oh my God.
2 Corinthians verse 4 from verse 16 to 18 and it reads 2 Corinthians verse 4 verse 16 to 18 and it reads therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but what is unseen thanks which is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal this is our hope this morning this is our hope oh that well what we pass through, what we go through this life, there's no power in hell uh, that can snatch us, oh God, uh, from our God, from our, His love from us. There's nothing that can stand in the way of a mother that loves a child. Uh, so much so our Father, so much so our King, oh so much so the lover of our souls, so much so our Shepherd, so much so, oh God, oh God, our creator. So much so, oh God, our provider. Oh, so much so, oh God, our keeper. Oh, so much so, oh God, Jesus, our healer. Oh God, so much so, oh God, our Jesus. Oh God, our banner. So much so, oh God, oh God, the one that has died even before the foundations of this world was made. Oh God, and he said, uh, it was finished. He didn't say uh, it was finished while he was on the cross. Uh, but he said it was finished even before he was on the cross. Uh, uh, before this world was made. Uh, it was finished. Uh, oh God. Uh, oh God, this is our hope. So we look up and No power of hell. No can ever blow me from his hands till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ. I want you to sing it with a smile on your face. Can 
chapter 4 verse 6 it says be anxious about anything but in everything with supplication and prayer make your petitions known unto God hallelujah for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Thank you, Jesus, for being the one that we can call on. Just for a moment before we continue in the place of worship, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Let's just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our ever-present help in time of trouble. Thank you for being the one that we can call on at any moment and at any time. You are worthy, O oh God. To receive all honor and glory. You are worthy, O oh God, to receive glory and praise. You are worthy, O Lord. We've all come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So begin to enter into your secret place with Him. Where you worship Him. Where there's no one else that you focus on. It's just intimacy with him in this moment. Jesus. Hide me now. Hide me now. Under your feet. Under your wings. Won't you cover me? Cover 
song with understanding. I cannot give up now. I cannot fail my Lord. I must fulfill his spirit. There is prophecy over. I cannot give up. I cannot give up now. Ayanda, 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 ayanda
Some of us, we're moving at a snail pace. For some of us, we need to go to the sluggard and not learn his ways. You know, when you sit down and think, life is so short. Some of us, we are in our 50s. 
Some of you are in your 30s, you are in your 20s. Time is running out. If Jesus is the lion, why am I moving at his snail's pace? If he is a lion, then the lion does not give birth to snails and turtles and turtles and slow moving animals. See, life is not about how long you are on this earth. Jesus died at 33, but he fulfilled purpose and destiny. I want you to have a sober reflection of your life. Are you moving at the pace God wants you to move? Or could you do better? By his grace, not by mind, not by power, by his spirit. The Bible says no man can come to the Lord except his spirit draws them. All eyes closed, lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, find them. Find the hungry ones that are looking for you. Find them. Find them, Lord. Eat the keleko sianda. Arande kabraska turiate. Arande kosuria namahandia. Find them. Aratoko. Lend the cabros kato. In the cabro kato lekasus and ayer. The Bible says, "Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness." Where are the hungry ones that want more of God? Holy Spirit, divine, find them, find them, find them. Find them, find them. Canto bros catele, pacayando, satali catea, para taliando, cabros cate, e tacando cosia, parando cosu taliande. There is a spirit. Inside me, and he is the Holy Ghost. I cannot fail, my Lord. I must fulfill his cause. And the call, he tell him and all say, Kindle the call, I send the letter to the and the record of the car in the Brazil in the car, but I never scattered and the Catana Mayan is inside of me, and is the Holy Ghost. Bible says blessed are they who do hunger and test after what? Righteous. Hunger. That's one thing no pastor can lay hands on you for. You must be hungry for it. But I'll show you a principle how to get hungry. I read the Bible. And I see a young man, Joseph. And Joseph, no Bible, no pastor, no prophet, no teacher. He had nobody, but he had God. And he went to Egypt and he was consistent and did not compromise his faith. What are we talking about? He knew God. Do you know God? Do you know God enough to say, 
when you have the opportunity to commit immorality to say no that's what I'm talking about do you know God enough to say how can I do such a wicked thing against my God do you know him enough God Joseph a young man of about 17 years he knew him he knew God do you know him or do you know about God two different things because every one of us knows something about God but do we know him and Paul the apostle with all his encounters was not satisfied after preaching the gospel going on missionary healing the sick delivering the oppressed and still stood there that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and I look at my generation I say Lord have mercy upon us no desire no hunger, no test. That one too, we want somebody to do for us. No, Jesus said it is finished. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. How much of Christ do you want? How much of Jesus do you want? Now listen. Do you know John taught in you God? John said, I am the disciple whom Jesus was loved. But let me tell you something. Even on the cross, Jesus said, John, take my mother home and look after him. Which means Jesus and John were very close. But when John saw Jesus in the book of Revelation, he realized he didn't know him. Twice, he almost worshipped two different what? angels. Because he thought the angels were Jesus. He couldn't make the distinction properly. Clearly he didn't know him. As he taught he knew him. That's where we are. We think we know Jesus. But we don't know him enough. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Help me to know you. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. Help me to know you. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Help me to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you on an experiential level. I want to know you. Say, Lord, it's good to pray. And say, our Father. But I want to get to the point where I say, my God, my God. In the cabras in the cotayande, Patoli Tando, Abronde Kazu Selehe Tende, Parandia Koti Kondi Abrosende, Picali Katu Sanda, Randi Cabras Catelemandia, Panda Cotoliate, Nita Kondi Cabras Catelemandia, Paranda, Yanda Cotonia Zende, Seta Kanda Cobra, Lacando Cusa, Randa Cabres and Ubra Sida Catune. Jesus. Amen. Take your seats. Children, children, teachers are waiting for you. Can I go to children's service? God bless you as you go. Worship team, stay here with me. Stay here with me. I want to show you a man in the Bible who knew God. You know, there are certain people who pray certain prayers in the Bible and many of us will be scared to pray. One day Moses said, 
God, why are you so angry? Why is your wrath so fierce? Calm down. Why do you want to destroy these people? If you destroy them, the heathen will say it was because you could not fulfill your promise. That is why you brought them here. You played mischief. You brought them here in the wilderness to kill them. A man talking to God and telling God to calm down. That he should take it easy. God, you are too angry. A man. Sometimes I ask myself, is this the same heaven we all want to go to? Men that knew God. And then the Bible say, and it repented the Lord the thing he had purpose to do. A man prayed and changed the mind of who? Of God. There are two prophets in the Bible who were able to do that. Moses and Samuel. To the point that God boasted about them and said that at a point in the nation's history said, even if Moses and Samuel comes to plead, I will not listen. That's how God respected those two. A man prayed and changed the mind of God. This morning, I'm not going to preach long. I think we need to pray more. So I'm going to preach less and we'll do what? We'll pray more. I was going to show you about three cases. But it's not necessary. It's only one case that's necessary. And I want us to open our Bible to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. And I want us, all of us to read together. In those days, let's go one, two. In those days, I can't hear you. you. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. How many of you know Isaiah was not a false prophet? The Spirit of God came upon Isaiah and sent Isaiah to the king's palace. In ancient times, if you don't have a message, don't go to what? The king's palace. Your head will be all. They don't do democracy. Your head will be cut off. And Isaiah went there and told the king, King Hezekiah, put your house in order. You are about to die. Do you know it was only 39 years? Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto what? The practice in the Old Testament from the kings was the king would have told Isaiah go back and tell the Lord to have what? Mercy upon me. The king would have told Isaiah to do the prayer for him. Not Hezekiah. So when life brings you to a point nobody's prayer is going to deliver you. You have to learn how to what? To pray. And said, number one, remember now. Uh, God, in case you have forgotten, I'm reminding you. Remember now, O oh Lord, I beseech thee. That's a strong word. Last time I remember that word was Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, by what? By the message of God. A man is beseeching the Lord. How I have walked before thee in truth. And remember that I'm reading the Old Testament. 
We have a better covenant than them. And he went. Jesus hasn't died yet. His blood hasn't been shed yet. And this man was bold to approach almighty God and remind God that he has walked before him what? In truth. He has no skeletons in his cupboard. That's one. Number two. And with what? A perfect act. Now, a man can walk outwardly good. But when a man is bold enough to approach God and say, God, I've also walked what? Perfectly in my heart. And number three, have done that which is what? Good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah. See? Yes, verse. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father. Now, in the Old Testament, there is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of who? God of Jacob. But this time, God comes with the title of the God of who? David, thy father. Because his great-grandfather was David, Hezekiah. I have heard what? Thy prayers. One. Two. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. A man that changed the mind of God. I have heard thy prayers and I have seen thy tears. Now the New Testament will tell you this. The fervent prayer of what? A righteous man of what? Availeth much. See, in our generation, we don't teach holiness anymore. We don't preach on holiness anymore. We don't talk about righteousness anymore. Anybody does anything and everything is under the blood. Listen, that is deception. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are they that are pure in the heart. Verse 8. Only they shall what? see God. Death. Now, we have proof. This man was bold to defend his own personal testimony before God. He didn't ask Isaiah to do the prayer. And then, when I heard, I cried unto God. God had no choice. But to turn the whole thing around. It's called reversing prophecy. My question to you this morning is, do you have enough in your heavenly bank account that in the days of adversity, you can go back to God and say, God, remember. How much do you have in your bank account? I'm not talking about money. So don't say, Pastor, I sowed a seed. That's not what I'm talking about. Your bank account, your lifestyle. Does your lifestyle... Is it in the right way and manner that you can approach God and say, put verse 4 again. And said, remember now. You are man. You are telling God to remember. He neither forgets. God does not have that limitation that we men have. But he said, remember now, O Lord, I, Hezekiah, that you created from dust and ashes, that you gave oxygen to I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth. Do you know God did not come back and say, Zechariah, I checked your record. Last week you lied. Um, this week you looked after a woman and lost after her. Last month you stole the offering. 
There was nothing in this guy's life. And when you look like you look at this scripture, then there's no excuse to live a righteous life. You agree with me? His grace is sufficient for us to live what? Because remember, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man what? Availed much. It's not how long you pray alone that makes the difference. It's how effective your prayer is. Does your prayer arrest the attention of heaven? Now, I'm thinking that the moment we start praying, it looks like there are curtains in heaven where God will say, an angel, check, who is that shouting over there? Say, ah, God, is Hezekiah. Oh, Hezekiah, please listen to what he's saying. He says, that his walk before you perfect and he's lived in truth and you want him to die. Say, angel, Hezekiah got the point, you know. Let's go and tell Isaiah to go and reverse prophecy. Tell Isaiah to do what? Reverse the prophecy. Do you know how Isaiah felt? Now, many times people think the prophetic is easy. The man have gone to the palace, prophesied, that seers the Lord. Put your house in order, you are going to die. About an hour later, he comes. That seers the Lord. The Lord says he's added 15 years old. Now, there, there is the tendency the king will say, arrest this man. Arrest him. False prophet. When did God tell you I was good? You are a liar. You almost gave me heart attache. So Isaiah too could have run away and said, God, I'm not going. But Isaiah confident, these are men that knew God. They knew God. I have walked before thee in truth. And with a perfect heart. How many of you have heard the doctrine of the new age church about nobody can be perfect? Let me see by hand. You heard that? Nobody can be what? By this scripture, that's a lie. I said by this, by this scripture, that is what? That's a, don't believe a lie. See, the problem is we have a generation that don't read the Bible. They just believe everything they hear from the pulpit. I've told you, anything I preach here, go back and check what? Stop doing, amen. I receive it. Receive what? Go and check it. Go and check it. Otherwise, in the days in which we are, you will be deceived. Do you know how many pastors will argue with me that this is not possible? Nobody, nobody can be what? Now, the only perfection that is not possible for human being is you cannot be perfect in the mind. But you can be perfect in the heart. So, pastor, what's the difference? Yes, Dickens is Virginia. Dick is in Virginia in his good heart without thinking. Opened his mouth wide and told Pastor Janice, Don't worry, at the end of the month, I'll give you $2,000. She believed she had the money she can give because there's a business he's doing. Somebody has to come and what? Pay her $10,000 so he can confidently and safely give her what? $2,000. But the man that was supposed to come and pay her. 10,000. Did not what? He not pay. He can't even find the man. Now, she is rejoicing, trusting that you know, Dickens, Virginia has, it, 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 it is always, his word is always up to it. It's not going to be any different. Do you understand what I'm saying? She then approaches uh, says, uh, Dickens, I just came uh, to remind you about what you promised. He said, I am so sorry. 
some things happen that I cannot fulfill it. She goes home and goes, all these women of God, liars. You know you won't help me and you lie to me. I could have looked at somewhere else and got my problem solved. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's upset and she's accusing her of being unfaithful. In the eyes of God, she's perfect. Do you understand? I'm going to take time to teach on sanctification. We're going back to the Bible days. Now we need to go back to the Bible days. I'm tired of the nonsense I see around in church circles. No. So you, you, ha, you can't be perfect because you have limitations of humanity. Another thing. You promised her that you will call her. Then you slept off. You forgot. As far as she's concerned, you didn't want to call her. You didn't care about her. You only care about yourself. All these church people, they are selfish. They don't care about anyone. I needed somebody to call me and nobody called me back. And so, in her humanity, he accuses you that you're a liar. She then decides that, okay. And Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn's phone is always on. Let me call Jocelyn. It calls Jocelyn. The number you are calling is not in service. He doesn't know Jocelyn has lost her phone. Another liar. <laughs> Then moves on to call another person. That ringtone was Kong, Kong, Kong is engaged. Then the person said, I'll call you, but I'm, 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 I'm a meeting with my manager. But the person forgot to what? To call you back. And because of that, in your little knowledge and in your little mind, the person has offended you. Can we grow past these things? Amen. Can we grow past these things? Because it's not helping anyone. Amen? Sometimes you have to give room and know that people are people. Humanity. Limitation of humanity. So a man can be perfect in the heart. Blessed are they who are pure in the heart. Only they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. And then, that is the scripture. But now we have practicals. A man that actually lived what? Like that. Joseph did not say, ah, there are no CCTVs here. No video cameras. No iPhones to record me and Potiphar's wife. I mean, just one time, if I do it one time, I can confess. The Bible even says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and what? Just to forgive us and to do what? And to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Then you pacify yourself with scripture, fall into sin and get into a mess. The only thing you will gain from that is Potiphar's wife will give you big meat on your food. That's all. But you have exchanged your destiny. For one drumstick. That's all. He would never have become the prime minister of what? Of Egypt. He would have missed out. And that's how many of us are living. Thinking we are smart. We can play with sin. But then that makes you very vulnerable. That in the days of trouble, you can't pray this kind of war prayer. So then you have to request all kinds of prayer warriors. Who will come and shout at you, spit at you, lay hands on you, pour oil on you. When, if you are living like this, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, avail at what? Much. It turned the whole situation around. And he was not even a priest. He was not a prophet. He was a king. Wow. Because his heart was right and he cried out unto God. God reversed the prophecy of death. 
that was from himself. He reversed the prophecy. Reversing prophecy. There are three other cases in the Bible I would love to talk about. But I won't. Stand to your feet. We need to pray. Sometimes we can be overloaded with scriptural word references. Just, just one man, one man. And you know, God did not leave us alone. Jesus said, I'll send another comforter who will what? help you is our helper. Do you know they didn't have that in the Old Testament? And this man. No, these are some of the guys. When I get to heaven, I look for his house and say, Good morning, King. I live in a different generation, but I want you to share your testimony with me. You live in a time when the Bible had not been written, there was no grace. Jesus had not died. How did you believe only in the law? There were 612 laws to obey. And you live right and perfect. And you were bold enough to tell God. I live in a generation where Jesus sacrificed and shed his blood. Died outside the gate for our sanctification. But sanctification is just a word in our generation. We have excuse for every evil thing. We make excuse for alcohol. We make excuse for immorality. We make excuse for evil talking. We make excuse for gossiping. We make excuse for everything. And you live right. You know, David lived before Hezekiah. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, that he read David's writings in the book of Psalm. Put Psalm 15 on. Psalm chapter 15 on the screen. Maybe Hezekiah read, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Verse 2. He that walketh what? Uprightly. And worketh what? Righteousness. And speaketh what? The truth what? In his heart. Next verse. He that abideth not with what? His tongue. Nor does what? Evil to his neighbor. Nor taketh up what? Reproach against what? His neighbor. Next verse. In whose eyes a vile person is what? Contempt. But he honored them that fear all the law. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Verse 5. He that putteth not out his money to usury. What that means is he doesn't, he doesn't gamble. Nor take a reward against what? The innocent. You don't manipulate people in their hour of need because somebody needs deliverance and you know you have the anointing to pray for the person. You look at the person and say, hey, the, the Lord says that you need to sow a seed of $2,000 before I pray for you. You're a liar. He that does this thing shall never be what? Moved. Verse 6. Preserve me, O God. Put verse 6 there. Preserve me, O God. For indeed, do I put what? I trust. Go to Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verse 1. That's not what I want. Go, keep going. Verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 4. This is the ones we know and we quote. Pause. Verse 3. 
Who shall ascend into the hill of the law? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Did we not read it in Psalm 15? We did. In the mouth or two or three words, witnesses it shall be established. David asked the question twice. His great grandson lived by it. Verse 4. He that has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto war, vanity nor sworn war, deceitfully. Next verse. He shall receive the blessing from who? From the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who told you salvation is not in the Old Testament? Next verse. Verse 6. This is the generation of them that will seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. This is where we get our name from. This is the scripture he showed me. This is the generation of them that all seek him. Why do we seek him? Because we want to be like him. Verse 7. This is what everybody knows. Lift up your head. Oh, he gets. You cannot command any gates to lift up when you have not fulfilled the first level. The church always wants to go for the power scriptures but are not prepared to look at the purity scriptures. Purity before power. The church likes to quote this one but amazingly, how many of you knew what was before the first one? That is the, still in the same Psalm 24. Lift up your hands and eyes closed. I want us to sing that song again. There's prophecy. What are you going to do about the prophecies over your life? Are you going to continue in sin that grace may abound? Or are you going to surrender and say, Lord, search me, O God. I know my heart today. Try me, O Lord. David said, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Someone one night he said, Where with us a young man cleanse his way by taking heed unto the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. That's the gospel. It changes lives. The Bible says, Jesus said, The prince of this world come in and have war. Nothing in me. That is our goal. That you can live the Christian life that when a demon shows up and say, Hey, demon, I have no business with you. Hey, Satan, I have no business with you because I have walked righteously. I have lived in truth and I have walked in perfection. Therefore, I have no business with you. Get out of my room and that demon will get out. Lift up your voice and cry out unto God. I want to make I want to make this song understandable to everyone. There's prophecy over your life, every one of you. God has an agenda for your life. That's why He created you. Do you know somebody like Samson was a picture of Jesus? His birth was prophesied by an angel. His mother was told he can't drink. Um, he was a Nazarene. Everything about that, um, um, Samson was a picture of Christ. But do you know Samson never had a prayer life? Two, twice Samson prayed when he was hungry. And the second time he prayed was when he was in trouble. All of them is a needs-based prayer. Never to know God. It was all about what he can get from God. Not about knowing him and be like him. He had no prayer. He had no prayer partner, nothing. He was a loner. He did not understand what his calling was about. He just breathed through. He didn't understand. He was a type of Jesus. When, when, when he stood and held the pillars, 
it was a sign of the cross. He did not understand his destiny. And there are so many Christians that don't understand. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. There's a prophecy over your life. And I wanted to make it a prayer, make it a song and a prayer song. I said, Lord, help me not to fail. Let's go. Let's go. I must fulfill his voice. There, there is, is prophecy over me. me. I cannot give and I, I cannot, I cannot, give up I cannot give up now. I cannot fail my I cannot Lord. fail my Lord. I must fulfill. There is prophecy. There, there is, is prophecy, prophecy over, over me. me. I must fulfill this call. I must fulfill this call. Lord, I pray. And I ask of you, Lord, release grace, release trust. Ah, in the grace, in the blood of bulls and of cows, we're able to sanctify Hezekiah. That he was able to live a holy and a righteous life. And there's power in the blood. I pray, oh Lord, that I'll be the person you want me to be. I get to where you want me to get to. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, cleanse me, wash me, purify me, sanctify me. And that's why I'm in the season. And I, I cannot give up now. I cannot fulfill this goal. I must fulfill this goal. There's a spirit. There's a there is spirit inside, inside of me. He's the Holy Ghost. And he is the Holy Ghost. I cannot fill my soul. I cannot fill my soul. I cannot fill my soul. I must fulfill this goal. I must fulfill this goal. Cry out, cry out on to him and say, Lord, I need you, I need you, I need you. Have me, Lord, have me, Holy Ghost, have me, Holy Ghost. I cannot continue like this. Have me, Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice and pray. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. I'm not a do you understand that in your workplace that's what they're looking for they're looking for Jesus, but they're looking for Jesus that will manifest in your life. They don't want the Jesus in the Bible. They want the Jesus to manifest in your life. They want the Jesus to manifest in your life. Your attitude, your behavior, your work, everything you do and say in the workplace. That's the Jesus they want to believe in. That's the Jesus they want to see. But when they look, they can't find Jesus in our lives. They hear us talk about Jesus. And they're tired of it. They want to see Jesus. They want to see Jesus. Do you know that when they came to arrest Jesus in Gethsemane, they didn't know who he was. They couldn't tell the difference. Say, Lord, Lord that I may know you. That I may know you. And the power of your resurrection. Of your Holy resurrection. Spirit, help me get there. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. Draw me. Draw me. Draw me to know Jesus. Draw me to know Jesus. I want to know him. I must fulfill. 
I want to know you. 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 And the left for ten to see. Sande mi cross cano sayande pakando si kalia belende kobras kitale etakanda parande kobras katole mende kandi ana me be kobras katole etakanda mabayando sande kere kanta komanda ros katole katano. That I may know you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to know you. Master, I want to know you. 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 In the cobra scandal, at the candebra, at the end of cobra scandal, in the brassia namabe, the cobra scandal, and the cobra scandal in my hand. There is and the cobras get to the head. I cannot feel my love. I cannot feel my love. I must fulfill this love. I must fulfill this love. Amen. Listen. A problem in the 21st century is holding on to the last experience we had. Our greatest problem is the last experience we had with the Lord. We keep giving the same testimony over and what and over and we are satisfied on that spot. Do you know Moses encountered God at the burning bush? But he wasn't satisfied. He said, Lord, I want to see you face to God. You heard a prophetic word. You're satisfied. Moses said that I want to see you all face to face. Isaiah thought he was a great prophet. I said, come. Come now and let us what? Reason together. If your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? As white as snow. Chapter 6. In the year that King Hosea died, Isaiah saw a vision. And when he saw the vision, he said, what is me? For I am a man of what? Unclean lips. And the Bible says, the cherubims went, the, ser the seraphs, they went, and they took coals of tongue, and they put it on his tongue, and his tongue was cleansed. And he said, who shall I send? Which means, there is importance of purity before missions. Purity before what? Missions. If we continue the way we are, I'm not saying you're not born again. No. I'm saying, come, come closer. Do you know Peter was still following Jesus when all the disciples had run away? The Bible said, and Peter followed him all afar off. As long as we are following Jesus afar off, between us and Jesus, the distance is too wide. So any temptation that came, come, we are going to compromise. That's not enough light. Have you noticed that when you have a touch light, as long as the touch light is close to you, you can see your very immediate. What well, that's how it is. He is the light of the world. But we prefer to walk on the edge of darkness and see where we are going. And we keep making mistakes upon mistakes and upon mistakes. And say, come unto me. Come, 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 come. Say, he has called us out of darkness into what? His marvelous what? Light. We say, oh, the, the light is too much. We'll stay on the edge here. One leg in the world, one leg in the church. No, 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 no. This morning he's calling, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Says the Lord, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Say, Lord, help me. I'm struggling, but help me. Help. I need help. I need help. 
Release grace upon me. Help me to come out of the place. Help me to come out of everything that's tying me down. Help me. Make it a prayer. And the cobras can the hotel. And the can the brass can the man there. Pack cobras can the. Don't get tired, pray. Don't get tired, pray. Lift up your voice and call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says Hezekiah turned to the wall and he began to call upon the name of the Lord. And he wept and he wept and his prayers were heard and his tears were seen. Palindo ko, shanda kabras ketene, yanda ko, la yanda ketendo kosiya, palia se kendo kusaye. Press, 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 and say, Lord, pass me number. Pass me number. Be like blind by tomorrow. Say, pass me number. Pass me number. That I may receive my sight. I may receive my sight. Pass me number. Catabros, Catole, Catanem, Paratacando, Palabra Catanamo, Petando Cabras Cato. Sete katele me debra na mabe, pato kato koli na mabe, rata kate na mabe, pato koli na mama sotele, yete kate na mabe le baya, rata pato le kate na mama sotele, yete yete le kato masa, pato kate na mabe, yete kate na mabe le ba, rata kasi na mabo kale kato, pato le kate na mabe, yete le kato na mabe, rata kate na mabe. Prayer is labor. Prayer is labor. Continue to labor. From the Catala in the Cobras in Palaya, the Catala in the Cobras in Palaya. Take me deeper, take me deeper, take me deeper, take me deeper, take me deeper. 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 Take me deeper.
But do you know my challenge? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews. The Bible asks a question in the book of Hebrews. Very deep question. If the blood of bulls and of cows and of goats could sanctify them in the Old Testament, how much more the blood of Christ? I know you don't hear messages like that. It's in the Bible. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. Verse 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify what? Myself. That they also might be sanctified what? through the truth. Verse 20. Neither I, neither pray I for these what? alone, but for them also, we shall believe on me through their word. Say, Jesus prayed for me. Jesus prayed for me. He saw you way back and he began to pray and make intercession for you that you will fulfill prophecy. You will fulfill it. He prayed for me. He prayed for you. He started praying for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. He began to pray for us. What a mystery of love. Verse 21. That they all may be all one. As thou father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. You know, people, how many of you have heard that the church needs to be one? You have, you, you've heard that kind of talk, right? Christians needs to be one. It won't happen. Unless we go back to the foundations. What makes us one is being sanctified and being ready to forgive one another. Until we go back to the fundamental, it's all talk. Do you know how difficult it is to go to pastor's meeting and suspicion, insecurities, and you're wondering if the leaders are like that, how much more the congregation? You know what our problem is? We forgot that message called sanctification. That's why John Wesley wrote a book called Christian Perfection. Oh, you need to read some books. Who told you this thing called holiness is not real? It's real. It's real. That was the message God gave John Wesley. And when John Wesley began to preach, he started a, a small club. It was a Bible study group and they call it the Holiness Club. And because they call it Holiness Club, people started making mockery of them and called them the people that follow a certain method. So the first name that came on them was they were what? Methodists. They followed a certain what? Method. And that is how the message of holiness came back to the church. But the charismatic movement and the Pentecostals have forgotten about holiness. All we want is fire. Let me tell you, fire without holiness will lead us into trouble. Hello? It will lead us into serious war, trouble. And glory which thou hast gave, given me, I have given them that they may be all one, even as we are all one. Peter and Paul, they are different personalities. All of them are different personalities. But then, when it comes to the gospel, they were one. They were one. Do you know how much we will achieve if we go back to fundamental teachings of the Bible? Salvation, sanctification. We want to ascend. But we don't even know what the foundations are. But we want to ascend. That's our problem. Lift up your eyes. Close your eyes and lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me. Now that I know that you prayed for me, this thing is possible. Do it in my heart. That's your prayer. I say, do it in my heart. Change my heart to oh Lord. I need a surgery. I need a heart surgery that will change my life, my purpose, and my mindset. That I'll be the Christian you want me to be. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pelenda cobra skito liande, seto cobra, hitan cobra de catandea, de tebros cate, in the call, 
Pale tekendo, sendele brendo, itabra katoli sandeye, pende kato masiande, itabra katole teye, ibrande katendo, sande pakato raskitele, ikando ka pakote kato zine nebele nebe, kape itabra katole katana babe. Amen. Have you wondered that we are the generation where the most sophisticated sound equipment? We have sound equipment. We have video equipment. We, we got all kinds of things. We, I'm here and people are listening to me in the United States. John Wesley could not do that. Are you with me? He could not do that. He had to travel physically to the place. And I read about that man. Do you know how many messages he preached? 40,000 sermons with the horse. And I asked myself, what am I doing? 40,000 sermons. Let me tell you, he was an Oxford graduate. And he traveled on a horse from England to Scotland, preaching the gospel. 40,000 sermons. I believe today, the people who, in the Western churches don't even know. The, the history I'm telling they don't know. Because we've forgotten about all of that. We're just going through emotions. Forty thousand sermons. One man. Another man. He was of the Presbyterian church. He nailed in deep snow. Deep snow. In Edinburgh. In Scotland. There's winter in the whole of Britain. But winter in Scotland is no joke. Very cool. He knelt in the snow and said, Oh God, give me Scotland or I die. Do you know God had no choice but to answer that man's prayer? And revival broke out. The people who were drinking alcohol in the ram shop, the spirit of God came upon them and they went to church and got born again. It's recorded history. Go and check. What are we doing? What, our generation is taking pictures and putting on Instagram. Hello? Hello? There's a world outside there that is dying. When was the last time you won a soul to Jesus? I want to ask you, when was the last time you led somebody to Jesus? Sometimes I sit down quietly and I talk to myself. I remember when as an 18 year old I gave my life to Christ, September 1990. When I gave my life to Christ, all I knew was Jesus saved. I wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't speak in tongues. I didn't know anything about deliverance. I didn't know anything about prophetic action. All I know, that there's a Savior that died. And I went about preaching the gospel. Bringing people to Jesus. And I looked today, people say they are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Speak in town, prophesy, and they go a whole year, not one soul for the master. What kind of Christianity are we living? Not one soul. We don't even care that the people outside there are dying. You know why? We don't have his heart. The Bible says, when Jesus saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. We see them. We are not moved. We just look at them and say, oh, God, these people unbelievers. That's how we, we forget that we were like them. That Jesus had mercy upon us. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Pray. Lift up your voice and say, help me. Get me out of my comfort zone. Get me out of my comfort zone. Help me, Jesus. I can't continue like this. Help me. Help me. And there go. There go. The Sataka. Parita got that. The Pabras get on it. Parita got there. Parato. It's a Pentelaco. Parato Cati Anamabe. See. Conda Cabras get a liar. Cato. In the Brasando, Palekata, Pando Braskatelaka, Hato, a Panda, Pelacato, Santa Braketa, and Mabe.
Listen. When what I'm talking about becomes a reality, and you see another Christian in another denomination, you will love them. Oh, you won't care about you know as long as they are Christ, they are your brethren. Do you understand what I'm saying? How oh, this is because we don't know him. One day the Bible says Jesus came and the disciples came and said, Master, we saw some people casting out demons and we forbade them to what? To cast out demons. And Jesus said, why did you do that? They are with us. Because as far as they are concerned, if they were part of Jesus, why weren't they following God? Going to the same place. I'm getting ready for another level. I don't know about you. I'm getting, I'm getting ready for another level. My goodness, when I got saved, I was a radical. I'm going back to that time. I'm going back to that time of rad, radical Christianity where you can win souls. Can't you see in our churches around the world, we don't hear testimonies of people getting saved anymore. That I, I was once a drunkard, but Jesus saved me. Where, were, where are those testimonies? I was once this drug dealer and everybody I remember those times when a drunkard will get powerfully born again. That the people in that area, they are not born again, no, but they begin to praise God. That finally this drunkard is born again. We can all sleep at night. Real Christianity. Ah, this word, uh, this, this Americanized thing. No, 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 no. Let's go back to Bible base. Amen. Back to the Bible. That will see life change and our lives transformed. That we can make an impact. You know, I read in Acts of Apostles, the Bible says, These are the men that have turned the whole world, world upside down. How many were they? Twelve men. One hundred and twenty men turned the world upside down. If every one of us will go after God in this room, don't you think we can turn Barbados upside down? Oh, yes. For God is looking for men, women, children. Who, eh, it's not how much you know. No, 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 no. It's how much you allow him to manifest through you. How much? Where, where are our young people that will be able to come and say, Pastor, we want to go on missions to this place and win souls. It's always something what they, what they can get from Jesus. Not what they can give to Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, draw us closer to yourself. Let, draw us closer to yourself that we will be able to have your heart, your heart, your heart. We will have your heart, your heart for the things of God. Time is running out. The world is preparing for third world war, and the church is dancing. And the other conde kata, si te kondi broske tala, etendo suriande kani kato. Leave us not like this, oh God, I pray. Leave us not like this, oh God, oh God. Please don't leave us like this. Don't leave us like this. Help us. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us in the name of Jesus. Help us, O God. Pan de Kota Lika so. Setame. Pelendo Kabras Katoria de Kataya. Don't leave us like this. Don't leave us like this, O God. Don't leave us like this, O God. Help us. Help us, O God. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Awake. Awake. How does sleep it? Awake. Awake. Awake to prayer. Awake to the word. Awake. Awake. Awake to the presence of the Lord. Awake. Awake. And the cobra skips on the door. Awake. Awake. Yo, 
How many of us have compassion for the sake? But we will we'll ask questions is like, how come healings don't happen? The Bible says, Jesus, when Jesus saw them, he was what? Moved what? We don't have any compassion. How many of us will want to lock ourselves up and say, I want to fast two, three days and get the power of God, go to hospital and all the people that are lined up in the emergency. Can we, have, what was the last? Anybody been to the... Uh, um, a&E quite recently in QH. It's horrendous. I'm telling you, it's horrendous. You have people in bed, some sitting on the, on the chair, and other. It's horrendous. The doctors can't even manage it. It's horrendous. How many people who want to give themselves to God and spend time in the presence of God walk up into the hospital and say, In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Gonna cost. It's gonna cost consecration. Jesus told the disciple, Tarry, 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 tarry. Nobody wants to tarry. Everybody wants to do something that satisfies them. We can't continue like this. We can't. We can't. We can't. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. The spirit of the Lord is in the room. Now, O oh Lord, I'm done. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, Lord. Thou Spirit of the Living God, have your way. Pandekal, hitendebraskete. Thou Spirit of the Living God, have your way. Paritekonde, satendo kabroski taya, lende kebrando koto, labrando sutoriande kataya. Have your way, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for all the online, online brothers and sisters there. Oh, Father, remember them right in their houses, oh God. Remember them. Remember them. Draw them closer to yourself. Reveal yourself to them in the name of Jesus. That they will be able to become the people you want them to become. Release grace upon them. Have mercy upon them. Draw them. Grant them the grace to seek your face. Grant them the grace to study your word. Grant them the grace to pray. Grant them the grace to become who you have intended them to become. That they will become weapons in your hands. That they will become evangelists on the way. That they will win souls into the kingdom. That you alone will receive glory. Oh God, breathe upon them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Parandi kotende. Tetendoro, Pali and the Co. There is prophecy over me. I cannot be found. Somebody stand behind her. And the Co. Broskete. And the Co. Pali the Co. Sandia Broskete. Kata. Pali. I must fulfill my call. There is prophecy over me. I cannot, I cannot fail this one. And I, and I, I cannot fail my Lord. Hey, I must fulfill my. I 
I decrease that you increase, Lord. I decrease that you increase, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Have your way, Lord. There is, there is prophecy over me. I want you to put your hand upon your heart. Put your hand upon your heart. Say, Father. Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Today I come to you. And I ask of you. Draw me closer to yourself. I might be far away. But you can draw me. I might be slow. But I know you can help me be quick. Help me, Lord. You helped Hezekiah. And he was able to have a pure heart. And live for you. You can help me too. Because there's power in the blood. Cleanse me, Lord. Jesus, you prayed for me. In John chapter 17. I call on your name. Sanctify me, O oh Lord. Purify me, O oh Lord. That I will be a vessel of honor. Use me for your glory. Help me. Don't give up on me. But quicken me. I cannot do it without you. I need you. Help me. And I will be able to become the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Now, in this atmosphere, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Ask and it shall be given unto you. I want you to take your prayer request before God. Is it finance? Is it health? Is it business? Is it academics? Take it to the Lord in prayer. His presence is in this room. He will answer you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. And the Aliso in the Lemeco Sarian de le Conde in the Le Canda Brando so said the Lecu at the Leme Maramando Sian de Co. And the car and the under case, and the command, the tell Colian Amabando sit there in the car, Malian de Cosette. I cannot fail my God, I must fulfill. There is prophecy over me. I cannot fail this one. I cannot fail my Lord. And I must fulfill his cause. Amen. Amen. It's from moment I wanted to open your eyes. Let's I know the Lord has touched our hearts today. And I want you to know that whatever I preach here this morning has got nothing. I have no news for it. This is what he wanted to do. Listen. He will help us. Because we are the generation that seek him. We will keep seeking him until we find him. Amen. We will keep what? We're not giving up until we what? Until we find him. Seek and he shall what? He shall find. That's the hunger. Now how many of you remember when I preached about the cave of Adullam? I want to see by hand those of you that have made plans to go on the cave of Adullam. Let me see by hand. 
one person, two, three, four, five, six. God bless you. God bless you. God bless The rest of you, please, I beg of you. I, I beg of you. Find time. Even, you know, it's holiday season and the hotels are very expensive and all of that. I know that. I live here. What you will do is, if you ask, because there might be somebody who has a property. Maybe he wants even to sell it. But it's on the market. But it's not been bought. Can you go and hide there for two days or three days and just you and God? That's what I'm talking about. I want you to find God. I don't want you to find me. I want you to find who? God. It's important. Because when the chips are down, you should be able to say, I know my Redeemer Lord. How many of you heard in the news about Iran attacking Israel? They shot 300 missiles and drones against Israel. I, I watched the whole thing. 300 missiles. 99% of them were shot down. The covenant keeping God. Any other country would have suffered serious what? Damage. All of a sudden, the Americans and the British and the French who were criticizing Israel decided to join Israel to shoot the things down. You know what surprised me? Even Jordan decided to shoot some of them. God will not forget Jordan. Even Jordan decided, no, 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 we don't agree with this. We shoot them at them down. And they shot some of them down. But do you know it's the beginning of trouble? Yeah. Yeah. It's just last week I told you about the solar eclipse, what it will bring. And it's beginning to show up right in front of us. Now, do you know when there's trouble in the Middle East, what happens to the economies? Gas prices are going to go up. Because right now, the, the United States is begging Israel not to what? Respond. I'm not sure about that, you know. Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh, please, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. He will stand and say, yes, I, I've heard you. But even if you will not come with us, we'll go alone. And then he will go alone. When he goes alone, the Americans will join. I thought they said they will, they will leave him alone just two weeks ago. Now, as the troubles increase in the Middle East, the gas prices are going to go up, which means the economy is going to uh, be hard. Look after your money. Hmm? It's not the time to be buying, buying, buying things that you can live without. Be wise. There's more trouble on the way coming. I keep telling you that the Listen, the U.S., Japan, and um, the Philippines had a meeting. And Japan has decided to increase its defense spending. You know why? They're preparing for China. And in that same week, the Chinese went to see North Koreans. And a few months ago, the North Koreans saw Russia. So the world is being what? divided. That is how the first world war happened. That is how the second world war happened. Anybody that knows history knows that we are heading for what? Trouble. Wars and rumors of war. Of wars. But, but they that know the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is what? The righteous do what? And they are what? That is why in the times in which we live, live right. So that when trouble comes, you can boldly go to God like Hezekiah and say, remember me. For I am one of the saints that made covenant with you with a sacrifice. According to Psalm 58 verse 5. I have bills to pay. Make a way. And it, you will need that kind of relationship because more trouble is coming the world is being set 
against each other. But we that are the children of God must know and understand times and seasons. It's not all good about, oh, yeah, my pastor taught us that and taught us that and it has come to pass. I'm not interested in that. So, we know what was going to come and then we never prepared what we were supposed to do. Is, is that wise? No. Joseph knew what was coming to Egypt and he advised the Pharaoh what they should do for the next seven years. Very soon, in the first week of May, we will have financial seminar. Don't be ascending because I, some of you are so spiritual. You think financial seminars are not spiritual enough. So I, 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 was, I was seeking the face of God. Please, come and hear wisdom for finances. Amen? So that we don't cry and be sending prayer requests. Some prayer requests are not prayer requests. Wisdom could have saved us from what? From trouble. So when we announce the time and the place, make yourself what? Available. And come and learn. Wisdom is not in what? One man's head. Amen. Amen. Who is doing the announcements? Why is everybody laughing? Huh? He's gone outside. He spent, if he's spending time with God, leave, leave her alone, you know. Can the screen do the announcements? And, and because in this in this atmosphere, sometimes we just the offering baskets are here. Just, just, just come and give. I don't want to disturb. I want us to be meditating on the word of God. God bless you online, family. The details of the financial thing will be put on the screen. And um, just come forward and just give your offering. I want us to be in this atmosphere and meditate on the word of God. Sing. There is prophecy over me. That's why they have microphone for you.
here in this room? Anybody here for the first time? Oh my God. Your first, this is your first time? First time in the service. I hope you don't think we are crazy people. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, my sister. It's been a long time. Anybody here for the first time? For the first time. God bless you. God bless you. I want to assure you that service is not always like it is. It's just that God had his own way today. Amen? And um, we are in ministry the light to go after God and the simplicity of our heart. You might see me somewhere in the supermarket in my jeans. Shout to me. You don't need permission to speak to me. I don't have time for all that drama. Amen. Just come and talk to me. I'm just a human being. Use of God. Amen. You are always welcome to this generation. A ministry that we stand uh, on the word of God. We teach the wisdom of God. We engage in spiritual warfare. And the Lord has been helping us for the last 10 years. And I believe you will benefit a lot. Also, we have Bible studies and all other details that we put on the screen. So, at the end of the service, Pastor Calvin, can you please stand up? Uh, Pastor Calvin is the tall man behind the ink glasses. Yeah, there are three tall men. One is sitting down, one is standing, one is standing here. With the giants here. So you see this giant, he will connect with you and get some details. We have some wonderful home cells where you can ask questions and we can communicate with each other. How many of you enjoyed home cell on Friday? Home cell on Friday was deep. The teachers, I said home cell, Minister Sadie, I said home cell was two weeks, right? I changed my mind. Add one more week. I don't think they can, they can explain and answer all the questions in two weeks because we're studying on the, the reality of eternity in hell with scriptures. So it's not a figment of imagination. You know, everybody hear about hell, but what does the Bible actually what, say? And who was designed to go there? The hell was not created for man. It was created for the devil and his angels. So every man born of a woman can escape if they will choose Jesus. But we need to know so that when people we know it for ourselves so that when people also ask us questions, we know. When we finish that study, we will study about the reality of eternity in heaven and the new earth. So you see the other side, then you make your choice. Amen? Yes, you make your choice. Nobody can make that choice for you. Has the Lord been good to us today? I think I should end my talking. this atmosphere, these offerings are blessed. Oh. Father, in the same way and manner, you lifted up the two fishes and the five loaves of bread. So do I lift this offering before you and I give you thanks. And then say, let your blessing be upon it. Let it multiply that we can be more effective to do your work that your name will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet, please. And I want you to hold somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. I'm coming for your hand. Yes. Hold somebody's hand. And then turn to the person on your left hand. If nobody is on your left hand, turn to somebody on your right hand.
and tell them meditate on this message. And say this, if Hezekiah could be made pure with animal blood, then the blood of the lamp of God can make you pure. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Can I meet the elders? Where's everybody? Is it true?